When it comes to managing queries in a Power Query editor, you've got a variety of options. We can see in this file, for example, we have 14 queries. Now, if what you want to do is to rename a query, you've got a variety of ways you can do this. I think probably the easiest way is to right click and rename a query. But if you're a shortcut key person, you're probably going to want to press the function key F2, which allows you to also rename a query. But alternative methods you may see people employ are to go to the name field and rename a query here, or even go into the all properties hyperlink where you can rename a query and give it a description. Another way is to go to the home tab and choose the properties button. And that will also allow you to rename a query and give it a description. So there's a variety of ways that you can rename a query. But what if you don't want to rename a query, you want to duplicate it or delete it or reference it? Then that's when I'd say go to the Home tab and use the Manage button. This is one way. You can delete a query just by using this option here, but be aware also that you could just click on a query and hit the Delete key. And that would also offer to delete a query. And you would simply say Delete if you wanted to get rid of it. But I'll go Cancel. You could also right click and delete a query using this option. So it's really easy to rename and delete a query. It's also easy to duplicate a query. You could again use the manage button up here and duplicate it, or you could right click and duplicate here. Some people also use copy and paste as a way of duplicating a query, or control C for copy or control V for paste or if you're into shortcut keys. So duplicating is easy, and lastly, referencing is easy. If you want to create a query that references another query, you can use this reference option, or you can go to Manage and use this reference option here, and create a new query that looks back and references another query. So those are the sort of options as far as managing your queries go. Let's look at um, what we can do, for example. Let's take this query here, Sales by Region. And what I want to do is I actually want to get rid of this last row. This last row, row 12, is grand total. And if I want to remove that row, I simply go to the Remove Rows button and Remove Bottom Rows. It will ask me how many bottom rows do I want to remove, and I simply want to remove one. So I type one and click OK, and this row 12 here will disappear. OK. Another option I want to show you is how to du duplicate this query. I'm going to click on Sales by Region. I'm going to go Control C and Control V, and it simply creates a duplicate of the Sales by Region. They're not linked in any way. They're not joined in any way. This is just a complete identical duplicate and completely independent. And it just simply puts in brackets number two because it's the second instance. Now, if I want to rename this, I'm just going to press the function key F2 and go for that method, and I'm just going to call it Regional Sales. And press Enter. So we've duplicated a query and we've renamed that query. Now what I want to do is show you how you can reverse rows. Perhaps for some reason that makes sense to me. I need Fakatani at the top. So what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to transform. So we go to the Transform tab in the ribbon and we say Reverse Rows. And this will literally put Fakatani at the top. If I reverse rows again, it'll put Auckland back at the top. To get rid of those steps, I'll just delete this step and delete this step. And those were the two reverse actions that I did. Now I just want to reverse it so that Fakatani is at the top. So I'll hit that button again, and there's Fakatani at the top. Now what I'd like to do is show you how you can merge columns. But before I can show you how to merge columns, I actually want to unpivot this particular um, query. So I'm going to click on 2020, hold the Shift key, and click on 2022. I want to select the three year columns. And on the Transform tab, I'm going to unpivot these columns, which will turn what is effectively this pivot table layout into a tabular layout. And here you see it here. You see Fakatani in the three years and a value for each of those three years. Wellington in the three years and a value for each of those three years. I can click on Attribute and press F2 and call this Year and press Enter. I can click on Value and press F2 and type Sales and press enter. And I've effectively unpivoted that pivot table. Now the reason I wanted to do that is to show you how I can now merge two columns together and effectively create a fourth column. 
I'll select region, hold the control or the shift key and select year and I'm going to add a column this time. I'm not transforming, I'm adding a fourth column. So I add column and I merge columns. When I choose the merge columns, this window comes up. Now it asks me what sort of separator would I like between Fakatani and 2020. So for example, I might like to have a colon or a comma, but I'm going to go just for a space. It asks me what would I like to call the column that these two will be merged into. And I'm actually going to call it region and year. And when I click OK, I've created a fourth column, region and year, and it's the joining or the concatenating of the region, a space, and the year. Now that I've joined those two columns together into this column, I don't need these two columns. So I'm going to click on region, control click year, and I want to delete these columns. So one way would be to right click and remove the columns, or I can go to the home tab and say that I want to remove columns. So I'll do that, and I'm left with these two columns. Now what I'd like to do is put this column in front of this column, and I'm going to do that simply by dragging and dropping region in front of sales, region and year in front of sales. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is reverse the rows again. So I'm going to go to the transform tab in the ribbon, and I'm going to choose to reverse rows. And that'll put my Auckland 2022, the most recent, at the very top of my list. Now something else you can do with rows is transpose them. At the moment we have two columns, and we have 33 rows. I may want to flip this on its side so I end up with more columns and less rows. And so on the Transform tab, there's this button called Transpose. And it's basically going to treat rows as columns and columns as rows. So I hit the Transform button. And what you can see here is I have more columns and less rows. Let me remove that, delete that step. So we're basically flicking this onto its side, transpose. Now having transposed this list, I now want to lift this first row up and make those headers. So I'm going to go to the Home tab and I'm going to say use the first row as headers. And now I have my first rows as headers. Now I'd like to create another query that references this query. So I go to Manage and I go to Reference and it makes a brand new query that references and is linked to the earlier query. I'd like to call this one, so I press F2, Total Sales Figure. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to count the rows. But if I count these rows, I'm only going to get two. Let's have a look. I go to Transform and I go Count Rows and I get the number 1. Actually, I do only get the number 1 because the first row were the column headings. So I'm going to delete that step, and what I'm going to do is transpose this back. Transform, transpose. Now what I want to do is count the rows, so I hit the Count Rows button. And so basically I've got a total of 33 rows, or a total of 33 sales amounts. And so that's your count rows button. So that's a variety of buttons you can use with rows.